well, let's rank these four onion types and I'll tell you which ones store the best and which ones you probably want to eat first. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having a fantastic day. It is Tuesday, May 7th here in South Georgia. And today we're gonna call it a wrap with our onions. We've got a few more varieties behind me here we need to harvest, so we're gonna harvest those, see how we did with those. Gonna give you kind of a ranking system for how onions store, which varieties or which types store better than others. And then lastly, we're gonna check on our garlic, which we haven't looked at in quite a while. So things in this plot are slowly coming to an end. Our English peas that we planted back in late January, early February, they're officially toast. They don't like this warm weather we've been having. We've already harvested one row of onions from this blank spot right here. And today we've got three more rows to pull. Now on some previous videos, we talked about why our onion harvest this year is pretty underwhelming. So we're not gonna revisit that. Just know that these are a good bit smaller than what we're used to growing around here. We also talked about when to harvest onions and how to cure onions when you harvest them. And so sometimes the tops will fall over when they're ready to harvest. Other times the tops won't fall over and the tops will just start turning brown and slowly wither away. And so I'm gonna go ahead and pull these other three rows, just lay them on the dirt there. We'll take a look at all three varieties, see if we did any better with these than we did with that first row we pulled, and then talk about onion storage a little bit. All right, so we may have done a little bit better with some of these than we did on that first row of DP Sweet Onions. Let's take a little closer look at what we've got. So this variety here is called Georgia Boy. This is a flattened or granix type sweet onion. You can see the shape on those. No monsters in there, but those will be pretty tasty. And then moving on down the line here, we have Timon, which is a round sweet onion. Not as big as we grew last year with this variety, but some of those in there aren't too bad. Pretty happy with what I'm seeing there, knowing this wasn't my best onion year. And then this Chianti red onion variety continues to impress. No two plus pounders in there like we had last year, but some pretty good size red onions there. And then lastly, we've got White Phantom. Nothing huge there. Maybe one that's close to baseball size, but man, those sure are pretty. Now, one important thing to note here, even though we underachieved with all these varieties size-wise, I only had one onion out of all those rows going to seed. That happened to be one of those white onions. So, although these onions aren't that big, they should still store pretty well for us. When you have a lot of onions go to sea, they usually don't store well and you need to eat them quick. So that tells me, although we didn't do them good justice this year like we did last year, that these are still pretty good onion varieties. When I'm looking for a good onion variety, I'm looking for one that doesn't go to seed real easy because I don't want that to happen because it usually means the onion doesn't store very well. All these varieties seem to be still pretty bolt tolerant even in a less than optimal grow out like we had which is good to see and now that i've got one of each variety here in my hand let's kind of compare these storage wise now i've told you my onion storage system isn't ideal it works okay but it's not perfect so i'm not going to give any timelines here but let's rank these four onion types and i'll tell you which ones store the best and which ones you probably want to eat first so of all these that we just harvested, the white onion is gonna store the longest. Now, these aren't very sweet. They're packed full of really pungent onion flavor, but they also store the longest. And that's why I always like to grow at least a few white onions here. There are some instances where I want that really strong onion flavor. I really like these on a chili dog when I want to really, really taste some onions. It's always good to have a few white onions hanging around. So those white onions are going to store the longest and then we have our sweet onions or yellow onions and the shape of these will determine usually how long they keep. So this more round sweet onion, the Timon here, tends to store longer than this flattened sweet onion like the Georgia Boy. Now the DP sweet variety that we've already harvested is kind of in the middle of these two. It's not as flat as the Georgia Boy, but it's not as round as Timon either, somewhere in the center. But we'll get more longevity out of this round one than we will this flat one. So we want to make sure we eat these flat ones first. 
And then last on the list, we have our red onion here. I absolutely love red onions, but they usually don't store for very long. We like to pickle a lot of these and pickled a lot of them last year. We've got a recipe on our website at lazydogfarm.com for pickled red onions if you want to check that out. It's a great way to preserve the harvest for some onions that usually don't store very long. Now, as is the case with anything, I'm sure there are exceptions to this. You might find some yellow onion varieties that store longer than some white onion varieties and even some red onion varieties that have a really long storage potential. I'm just giving you some general trends with what I see amongst the varieties we grow with white storing the longest and red having the shortest shelf life. So later today, the boys and I will get all those onions underneath the barn in the shade on a rack of hardware cloth. Now, right here, we had a nice, full, lush double row of potato onions at one point, and we just started losing them day by day. I do have a few plants out here that survived and don't look too bad. So I'm almost thinking I should probably try to save these. Now I know that potato onions aren't supposed to do that great down here in the deep south anyways. That's why we lost so many probably in that double row. I also realize that local adaptation takes more than one season. But it's probably worth saving these. So I'll just pull those up. I'll put them in a big pot. We'll see what happens. See if we can get some potato onions to make it down here year after year. And not far from that onion plot, right over here where we also have our taters growing, we've got a heap of garlic that we really haven't even talked about since we planted this stuff. So starting now, we've got six rows of elephant garlic here packed in there real tight. So we've been saving our own seed stock for three or four years now. And it seems like every time we replant this, it does a little better. I was worried, planted this thick, that I was going to have trouble keeping the weeds under control. Now there are some weeds in there now because we've been busy with all this other planting. But I was able to keep it somewhat manageable. It doesn't look that bad in there we could get that cleaned up in a matter of minutes now we won't know for sure until we pull all this garlic in another few weeks but usually if you've got a thick base there you're gonna have a big old head of garlic underneath the dirt now we've got a few runts out here some that just were late coming up but a majority of them look like that one right there which tells me we might be in for a nice harvest. Now you'll also notice that a majority of these elephant garlic plants are putting up scapes or seed heads. We can see them scattered amongst those six rows there. We do want to remove those. That will extend our growing window a little longer. So I'll come through there later today and clip all those off. These elephant garlic scapes, you can eat them, but they tend to be a little tough. They're not as good as the hardneck garlic scapes. So save them if you want to. You can try to eat them. I usually don't like I said they can be a little tough now unlike our bulbing onions that we don't want to fertilize once they start the bulbing phase with garlic we can feed it right up to the finish line so later today after I trim those scapes after I do a little weeding in the elephant garlic patch I'm good in mind to put some 1300 out there give it one more round of nitrogen and so next to that elephant garlic, we've got a double row of hardneck garlic. This is a variety called Spanish Roja that a viewer sent us last year. Sent us just a handful of cloves last year. We grew those out and then replanted all what we harvested last year and ended up with a nice double row here. Now I cannot explain the inconsistencies we're seeing along this row. All this garlic came up really nicely and it all looked really good for a few months there. Then I started to notice some decline in some of these plants. So all of this row has received the same amount of fertilizer and the same amount of water, which makes this even more puzzling. So these plants here at the very beginning of the row look fantastic. Couldn't be happier with how those look. Then we have this random little gap right here. Those are looking rough. Got a few good looking ones right there more rough plants, and then a few decent ones here at the end of the row. Like I said, I have no idea what's going on here, but I'm glad that we got at least a few that look like they're gonna give us some nice garlic hits. 
So much like the elephant garlic, that hard neck garlic will form scapes as well. They haven't yet, but they will eventually. That variety produced a ton of scapes last year for us. When they do form scapes, we'll want to cut those off. Now the scapes on that hard neck garlic are a lot more tasty to me than the elephant garlic, so we will be sure we eat those. And then in this bed right here, we've got a few ants, but we've also got a bunch of soft neck garlic. I believe this is the Island Star variety that we've been growing for a few years and saving our own seed stock. Now these plants don't look that great right now, but they've looked pretty good for the last few months. The soft neck garlic won't really put up seed heads like the hard neck and the elephant garlic. The leaves will just start yellowing. It'll start looking kind of pitiful, and that means it's ready to harvest. So I think we're getting pretty close on this. I'm gonna let it hang around for another week or so, and then we'll start pulling a few, seeing what we've got. So I hope you enjoyed the video today and if you still have garlic growing in your garden let me know in the comments below how it's looking. Also let me know what you think about my onion storage potential rankings and whether you agree or disagree. And as always you can find a lot of the products we use around here on our website at lazydogfarm.com and if you've never seen our top 10 onion growing tip list you can watch that right here. Lots of good information to help you grow some really big onions in your backyard. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.